<laughs> I've had many experiences with the paranormal in my life. The first time that I can recall ever having a ghostly encounter was when I was living with my aunt and uncle in Warrington, North Carolina. I was home alone and doing my homework at the kitchen table when my golden retriever started to act a little funny. He kept jumping in front of me and growling at the back door. It was a glass sliding door leading outside to the deck. I got up because I thought that maybe he wanted to go outside, but instead, I saw the transparent head of an Indian just moving across the deck. We were living in a trailer about five feet off the ground, so I believe it must have been walking on the ground beneath the trailer. I screamed and jumped onto one of those freestanding freezers that we kept in the kitchen. When my mom remarried, she moved my younger brother, my younger sister and I, all the way to Cape May, New Jersey. That's when things got weird. We were living in an apartment above a hardware store while we waited for our stepfather to get us a bigger place. My sister, stepsister, and I stayed in the same room while my brother took the living room. Every night, we could hear the sounds of a person wearing heavy boots walking on the ceiling. What got us scared was that we were as high as the building went and there wasn't even an attic above us. Another time our parents were out, and we were all in the living room watching TV when we heard the sounds of someone running from the front door to a computer chair in the corner. The chair spun around, and it sounded like someone jumped off of it and ran into the kitchen. The kitchen light turned off, then everything was quiet. We all kind of looked at each other, then ran into our room screaming. We all slept on the same bed that night. Things got worse when we moved. We were in the same neighborhood, just a bigger house. My mom began to experience things in the new house as well. My stepsister had a history of talking on the phone in the middle of the night, and one night, my mom swore that she heard the phone being dialed. She called for my stepsister to go to sleep, but she got no answer. So she went to her bedroom and saw that she was asleep. When she went to find out where the dialing was coming from, the phone was thrown at her from the living room. I would always hear my mom calling me, and she say that she wasn't. Sometimes I like to think that I saw my brother run into another room, but he wouldn't even be there. When my baby brother was born, it was as if he could see things that nobody else could. Sometimes he would follow things with his eyes and laugh until whatever it was went towards the basement door. Then he'd cry as if someone was hurting him. Sometimes we'd see and hear people in my brother's room, and then they'd look at us and vanish. My mom wanted to move, so we ended up moving a half an hour away from that house. First thing that happened to me in that house was after my baby sister was born. Now there were eight people in my family. I was babysitting her one night, and was changing her diaper in our very cramped bathroom. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw my brother enter the bathroom and I could feel him standing behind me. When I turned to tell him to get out, nobody was there. I thought it was strange, but didn't really think much of it. I accidentally dropped the diaper onto the floor and when I bent down to pick it up, I saw my brother's feet and legs I jumped back, but nothing was there. I grabbed the naked baby and ran out. Then one day, I stayed after school for a party with my club. I was talking with my teacher, then I wandered off with my friends. About five minutes later, she came to me and asked where I went. She said that she asked me to go and get food from the back and that I had followed her in there. But when she turned to hand me the food, I wouldn't take it. Then when she turned around again, I was gone. She didn't see me leave, even though the door was right in front of her. I thought it was probably a different girl, because I had been with my friends the whole entire time. After the party, my friend had to use the bathroom 
so I went with her. When she was done, we both stood and fixed ourselves in front of the mirrors. A girl walked in and went into the stall behind me. We were going to leave, but I had to spit my gum out, so I pushed open the stall behind me and jumped back and said sorry because the other girl was supposed to be in there. Nobody was there. She couldn't have left because she would have to pass both me and my friend to leave. My friend looked at me and I knew that I wasn't going crazy. I realized when I was very young, I could see things that no one else could. It all started when a friend of mine was killed during a tornado. We were about five years old, and after the storm, he and his sister appeared in my bedroom. Over the years I saw them very often, and just thought it was because I saw the tornado carry them away. But later, I discovered that was not the case. When I was 12, my family moved into an apartment complex. We had a two-story apartment that at first seemed pretty normal. One night, I had a dream in which I kept being told to look in the attic. The problem was, was that the attic only had openings in the even apartments. Ours was an odd number. A short while later, I started hearing footsteps, but no one was there. One night, I followed the sound of footsteps down the stairs and into the living room. There I found an elderly lady rocking in a chair. She just walked away and disappeared. I became so used to her appearances and it never bothered me. A few years later we moved in with our great grandmother and grandmother. There was a nice area of woods behind their house where we used to hike. My great grandmother used to tell me stories of a hunter who went into these woods and ended up never coming out. As kids, we used to laugh it off as a myth. One summer's day, we went hiking with some of our friends. Once we got into the woods, I had this feeling as if something was following us. It was a scary feeling, not like any encounter I ever had. After climbing a cliff, we were walking around when something ripped my bracelet off my wrist. At this point, I convinced everyone it was time to go home. We got lost in a new trail we discovered and came across a man dressed in a white shirt and what looked to be purple pants who appeared to be building a fire. Upon later discussion, we discovered that he fit my great-grandmother's description of the man who never came out of the woods. While this scared everyone else, I kind of knew he was just stranded. For many years, I experienced many strange events. Something would move items and then put them back, or appear before I was outside. I became used to it. It happened all my life, but in 1995, my husband and I moved into a house in London, Kentucky. This house seemed normal at first, but after a few months, we began hearing footsteps throughout the house. Then a shadow chased my sister up the stairs from the basement. It seemed to be just because it was an old house. Until one morning, someone said hello to me. I was the only one awake. Everyone said I was hearing things. Until one night, we left town to visit family and left our roommate home alone. As night fell, it began to storm. When the storm knocked out the power, our roommate began hearing footsteps. Then she heard someone say hello and asked where I was. At this point she left. The next morning, I called to check on her and someone or something picked up the phone and laid it down. I could hear voices talking, but when we got there, the house was empty. The phone was laying in the floor off the hook and our roommate arrived home shortly after us. Her aunt told us that she had been with her all night. A few months later we moved out and never heard anything from the new residents about hearing things. The strange thing was, a few years later, my daughter started talking to people who no one else could see. Apparently, 
It's a family thing. I would like to tell you some of my personal experiences with the paranormal. When I was about 10 years of age, we were living in Trinity Springs, Indiana. I lived with three other sisters and our mother, Will, our mother, decided to go for a walk to a friend's house that was about five miles, give or take a few miles. To kids, it seemed to be a long ways from home. On the way, we had passed the cemetery. It always gave us the creeps to walk near and we would run past it. To keep the creepy feelings down, mother would always get mad at us for doing it. When we arrived home, the door was standing wide open. Mother told us to stay outside, just in case someone was in the house. We did as we were told, and I watched the doorway in case the police needed to be called. After about 10 to 15 minutes, we all went in, ate supper, and went to bed. It was about midnight when something pulled down on the edge of the bed. I thought it was our dog wanting up under the covers with us. I stuck my foot down there to help her up. When I did, a hand grabbed my left foot. I pulled my foot back quick. Before I knew it, my foot began burning like it was on fire. Then the hand rushed up my sister's leg, searching for my foot. And of course I screamed. Mother came running into the room, wondering what was wrong. I told her, and all she said was, You just had a bad dream, so go back to sleep. She went back to bed. I jumped from our bed, all the way into the hallway. I was not willing to put my foot on the floor next to the bed. When I returned to the bedroom, I looked under the bed to see what was under there and see nothing there. Soon as mother was asleep, we jumped up and grabbed something to try and protect herself somehow. Soon as we went to sleep, this person would grab, hit, or punch us. When daylight broke, it quit, and we got a little sleep before mother would wake us up for breakfast. When we walked into the kitchen, our mother asked us how Diana got the bruise on her arm. We told her, and she blamed us for fighting. My sisters and I told her neighbor about the experience. She told us about a home that stood in the same place that had burned down with three children inside, while their parents had went to town to a bar. The eldest child tried to keep the fire going, because the house was getting cold. When she was putting wood into the wood stove, a piece of coal had fallen onto the floor. She hid under the bed. She thought that her parents would get mad at her for what she had done. All the children had passed away in the fire. Here's one more. When my grandmother was still around, she lived in a house that was haunted by grandfather. He had passed away in 1959 when my mother was five years of age from black lung because he was a coal miner. At night, you could hear him walk down to the basement and back up the steps. If he had seen that you had no covers on, he would cover you up to keep you warm and safe. My friend, his girlfriend and myself were all sitting around watching a scary movie one night in his apartment. After the movie, we discussed supernatural things we had experienced before. Both my friend and his girlfriend said that even if the ghost of a family member appeared to them and meant no harm, they would still be horrified at the sight of it. I, on the other hand, had said that I wouldn't be because I've had experiences as a child and that I wasn't afraid of them. As to whether or not there were ghosts of past family members is not known to me. I was too young to remember details. I stayed a night at his apartment a few nights later. While I was laying on the couch, my friend came out from the bathroom, walked through the hallway which is mostly visible from where he slept on the couch and into his room. After he shut his door, it was almost completely dark. As I rolled over and faced the hallway, I saw a faint white figure of a woman from the middle of her torso on up. Her hair was short and black and she had broad shoulders. 
as to whether or not she was in fact a female isn't for sure. I just got the distance feeling that what I saw was female. It stayed floating in the hallway, facing me for a few minutes before ultimately fading. Now honestly, I was slightly freaked out, but I didn't feel threatened. I rolled over and tried to go to sleep. A period of time that seemed like a few hours had passed and I'd finally gotten into the half-conscious state of sleep. Slowly, I started to develop a strange feeling on my right shoulder and back. I was facing the back of the couch with my back to the hallway. I heard a calm woman's voice say, How are you feeling? And I responded immediately, I'm very tired, please let me sleep. Movement from my mouth jolted me from my sleep, and the feeling on my shoulder and back, had disappeared. The next day I told my friend about what I experienced. He bursted into tears as I finished the story. To my surprise, the night was the anniversary of his mother's death. After discussing it with my friends, I wonder if it was in fact his mother. Then why would she appear and speak to me and not him? They suggested that the fact that I was not afraid of the paranormal and that I had admitted it a few nights ago was why she came to me. This was about a month ago. Since then, strange sounds and odd visions are seen in his apartment occasionally. The slight sound of egg shakers are heard moving around the living room. I've heard it pass right over my head before and circle around in the kitchen. Santa Cruz, California the Red Room Restaurant. This is the site of the old Santa Cruz Hotel. This is an old house, now converted into a restaurant and lounge. I had the experience there back in August 2007. I went to use the women's restroom. I went into the first stall and noticed that the toilet paper cover was opened. So I went to the next stall and noticed the same thing. So when I went back to the first stall, I closed the door. I heard footsteps, as if someone had entered the bathroom. The footsteps got louder, and it almost seemed as if someone was pacing back and forth in front of my stall. I looked under the door and realized there was no one else in the restroom other than myself. Being the logical person I am, I thought maybe it was someone walking upstairs, not even realizing there was no upstairs. Upstairs would be the roof. That's when I looked back down again and noticed the fog move past. As I was ready to open the door to my stall, I could almost feel a presence, as if someone was standing right in front of me. I couldn't see anyone, but I felt someone there, very close. I left and went back to join my part for a dinner and never said anything about it. The waitress who was very chatty started talking about the restaurant and the history behind it. It was an old brothel house in the 1800s. She then revealed that there was a ghost there. She said it was a ghost of a young prostitute who was very unhappy and decided to hang himself in the back room, which was now the women's restroom. I almost fell out of my chair. I just couldn't even believe it. The waitress claims that it's a friendly ghost and that she likes to mess around with people. She also claims that the ghost constantly opens toilet paper covers, and they're always having to close them. Hence, why the covers were open when I went to the stalls. I quickly told the waitress and the rest of my party what I experienced. The waitress believed me, but the rest of my party thought I was nuts. If people want to go there and experience it themselves, they should go in alone. She won't show herself to groups. I've always had weird experiences in my life that many people have never had or do not believe. The scariest one occurred when I was 12 years old. It was the spring of 1986. We lived in an old neighborhood in some cottage type houses. One day I was home alone shortly after school, doing my homework, when suddenly, 
I heard a man breathing very loud and deep. It sounded like he was struggling for air. I was in my room, and the restroom was across the hallway from the room, and that's where the sound was coming from. I immediately turned off the square electrical fan that I had on, thinking maybe it was malfunctioning. As soon as I turned it off, the heavy breathing got louder. There were no open windows, so it wasn't coming from the outside. I became very scared, because I knew I was the only one at home and there was certainly someone breathing very loud right outside my room. I ran out of the house as fast as I could and waited outside until my parents got home from work. My brother and sister were due to arrive as well. When my mom returned. I told her what I heard and she totally believed me. She said that when we were into the house, they were told that a man was stabbed to death in the house. Could it have been his echo of his last moments? Guess we'll never know for sure. Hey Phantoms, it's your good fan, Other Phantom, from the fifth dimension. I just want to let you guys know that if you want to climb into my portal, it's right here. It's kind of like a convertible. It's cool. It's like you get in the passenger seat and we just take off. Vroom, 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 vroom. We got comments, likes, and subscriptions in the rear view and front view. And we got the stop signs telling us not to halt. Just kidding. The stop signs always tell us stops. And I mean the stop sign as in the troll. The troll symbolize stop signs. But you don't stop. You just keep going. And that's exactly what I freaking did. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I really don't. Don't. Just ignore what the hell I said. Um, I'm just really happy, guys. This may be my last video of the year. And I just want to say, what a way to end it. These stories capped off an amazing year, and I just want to say everybody who's been supporting me, it's been fantastic. I'm really appreciative of your support. I really am. No matter how many times I slur my words, I really believe that you guys are here because one plus one equals two. Oh, okay, never mind, guys. Uh, I, I thought I had like some kind of speech going, but I guess not. No, but seriously, on the real, guys, like I don't mean to get sentimental, but... You guys are really making my dreams come true and I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful for your support. Like, I've always said this since I started YouTube. Every time I get a comment, every time I hear from you guys, it just makes me so happy. So thank you again, guys. It's just always been a joy and pleasure to narrate for you guys. And regardless of what's going on in my real life, I know when I make that video, when I take myself out of reality for a second, I have this YouTube space where I, you know, narrate and tell scary stories and whatnot well ghost stories let's be honest there's not really any ghost stories besides scary stories that are ghost stories here so yeah um it just makes me feel so passionate that i can actually share something that i've created with you guys and you guys can take that with you for the rest of your life i guess that's where i'm going anyway you guys know what i mean really um i'm not good at the speech thing but really guys thank you so much let's start off 2019 on a high note for everybody and let's close out 2018 with me, I guess. Or whatever you're doing. I guess I'm narcissistic. I think everything revolves around me, and I assume you guys are going to watch immediately. But really, guys, no. I do love you guys. And comment, like, share, and subscribe. I love you guys. And I'll speak with you again soon. I'm so freaking cringy. Bye-bye.